Ryan Forrest, welcome back to my channel. I have been on the road recently, back to back to back weekends, and I've just been so busy. I've had very little time to try and film a video, but I finally have decided enough is enough. I'm going to film one on the road. So right now I'm in a hotel in Chicago, Illinois. And this video, I thought, let's do something for beginners. Let's do something for new people. There are a lot of people out there who are gonna go to their first ever tournament real soon, or maybe they're planning to at the beginning of next season. So this is gonna be a guide on what to expect at your first tournament and how to prepare for it. So let's get started. So first things first, you are going to need a membership to your national federation if you want to compete at a sanctioned fencing tournament. So you may already have a membership. Normally if you join a fencing club, they ask you to get a membership, but that membership level you have now may be non-competitive. So you're going to have to check your status if you are a member at all, and if you are, what level, because you're going to need to be a competitive level of membership to go to these tournaments. So it doesn't matter if it's local or national or whatever in between, you're going to need this membership to compete. So go and sign up as soon as you can. Next up, you're going to want to register for a tournament. If you're going to do this, you're gonna to have to understand what kind of events you're signing up for. Now, maybe you're a younger kid, so you want to register for an age-capped event. So, 10 and under, 12 and under, 14 and under, cadet, junior. Maybe you're a little older, or maybe you're a teenager that wants to fence older people, so you can fence senior events. So that could be like a, an open event, or a Div 3, a Div 2, a Div 1. You also may be a veteran class, so if you're like 40 plus, 50 plus, 60 plus, 70 plus, 80 plus, etc., etc., there are different events for everyone, so there's definitely something for you to find that you can fence it. Now, if you want to fence at a local level, that means something you probably drive to, you know, not, nothing too far, then you're going to want to go to a website called Ask Fred. This website, uh, it's not the prettiest website, but it's very functional, it works very well. It is a database of tournaments, camps, and clinics for the sport of fencing, and you will find some local tournaments. If you just put in your zip code, what area you're in, you can find tournaments to go to. Um, this is the best way to sign up for local tournaments. If you are registering, you need to do it early sometimes. So some tournaments, especially local tournaments, they may be lenient and they may allow you to register the day of or the night before, but many tournaments will require at least like a week's notice or two weeks or something. They may have a late registration fee applied. So check the tournaments and see what the requirements are in terms of registering and what time frame you have to do so. Now, if you want to step it up and you want to fence at a regional event or a national event, you're going to want to go to USA Fencing's Tournament Database. I'll put a link in the description as well. You are going to need to register via them if you want to go to these bigger tournaments, more important tournaments. These will have be worth regional points or national points, depending upon what level you're entering. So everything has to go directly through USA Fencing. So a very similar situation, except that registering probably requires that you do it even earlier than those local tournaments you were finding on Ask Fred. So if you want to fence at this higher level, you have to plan ahead. So check the database, check the registration deadlines, and make sure you register in time because normally there are extra fees applied, just like the local ones sometimes, if you register late. So nobody wants to pay extra money for getting the same thing you could have done like weeks before. Another thing to take note of is that some events have ratings caps or requirements. Now, if you're an unrated fencer, you're new to tournaments, you would not be allowed to fence the higher level events like a division one at the national level. That is capped as the C and higher. 
If you're fencing something a little lower level, it might be the reverse cap. So it could be D and lower if you're fencing like a local event or, you know, Div 3 or Div 2. They have maximum level of ratings that you can have to enter. So I would recommend for a newer fencer that you're going to do a D and lower if you're a older. If you're younger though, this really doesn't exist. If you're 12, then you're going to want to just enter in a 12 and under event or a Y14 event or something. But you, you, there's really no like ratings, caps or anything for the youth events. Okay, so now you are registered for a tournament, but now you need to prepare all the equipment for said tournament. So I'm gonna put a list right here of all the things you're gonna need, but I'm really gonna focus in on what you need to do for your weapons and your body cords and your mass cords, all the electrical parts. So this stuff, you need to have backups. You can't just have one weapon. You can't just have one body cord. These things break down. So if you're a saberist, I recommend at least two sabers. If you are a foilist or an epaist, I recommend at least three weapons for these two weapons. You're gonna need three because they break down a little bit more often or they fail the weight test at the beginning of each bout, which very common, springs mess up, barrels get messed up. So have at least three weapons for those two. For body cords, you're gonna want at least two body cords. If you are a foilist or a saberist, you're gonna to wanna to have at least two mass cords. Now, as you are probably paying attention to, I'm saying at least. So if you have more, the better, but obviously that comes with the heavier price tag, you're gonna need more equipment. So I'm giving you the minimum numbers that I recommend having, but the more you have, the more comfortable and secure you're gonna feel. If things break down, you're not gonna feel, oh, I have to repair this or I have to pay someone else to repair this. I have to do this quick. I'm running out of equipment. I'm gonna have to borrow things. That's stressful. You don't wanna think about that stuff when you're fencing. So have enough extra so you don't have to worry too much in the middle of the tournament. Okay, so the next step may sound simple, but it is quite crucial to make sure you have a good day at the event. You want to show up at least one hour early. So let's say your check-in close for the event is at 10 a.m. You're gonna wanna show up at 9 a.m. or even earlier to make sure you have enough time to do everything. So if you have things to do, which you will likely, I'm gonna review this in the next part of the video, you have to make sure you have enough time to check in to the event, you're gonna to have to check in with them. You're gonna to have to have time to warm up. You're gonna to have to have time to check your equipment and weapon control. So just think about when you go to the club and you train. You're, you're likely, you warm up at the club, maybe you're doing some stretches, maybe you're doing some drills, maybe, you know, some footwork, things like this. You have, you're gonna to have to have at least like 45 minutes to do all that. Plus, before you fence your first pool bout, you're likely gonna to wanna to fence a practice bout. One that doesn't matter, so you can fence like a friend or some random person you just met. You're gonna to want to at least get a little bit more prepared for the actual tournament. And everybody understands this. Everybody knows they're gonna fence some warm-up bouts and the tournament organizers are normally there at the venue early. So if your event is the first event of the day, most tournaments, the organizer's gonna be there two hours early, an hour and a half early at least. So show up early to your events so you have time to get everything done. Now we have to talk about equipment at least one more time. When you show up to your event, hopefully early, you're gonna to have to have your equipment inspected. So you have to get these control marks, these control stamps on equipment. So if you're in a local tournament, it's likely they're only gonna check mask and glove. The glove to see if there's any holes in it, and the mask to see if it's structurally in good shape, no dents. And they're also gonna do a punch test on it, and they're gonna see if the mesh can hold up and not split open or show any gaps or anything. If you go to a national tournament, they're gonna check all that, and they're gonna to have to check the electrical equipment. So that would include body cords, lames, and mass cords. 
Okay, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. You checked into the tournament, you checked your equipment, and you've warmed up, you've had practice bouts, you've done footwork, all that stuff. You are ready to go. You are ready to fence. Well, the first stage of the tournament is the pool. For a pool, it's where they group people together and you have to fence every single person in the pool to complete it. You fence to five touches, and it's typically six, a pool of six or a pool of seven people. If you are at a smaller tournament, then you may have a smaller pool, like a pool of five or a pool of four. But typically tournaments will want to have pools of seven or pools of six. Now, you're gonna fence each person to five in the pool, and that's how you rank everyone going into the direct elimination table. Now, normally for a direct elimination, you win, you go onto the next part of the table, and you lose, you're out. There are some tournaments that have a different format, so sometimes you might fence two rounds of pools before you get to the DE table. Or you might fence something called a repechage table, where you have to lose twice to be eliminated. These are rare, and you don't find these too often, especially in the US, these are very uncommon. So you are likely to fence one pool and then go right to the direct elimination table. So you fence everybody in the pool to five, and then you fence as many bouts as you can keep on winning in the direct elimination. So I'm gonna put a pool sheet right here so you can see what it looks like, and I'm gonna fill out a few slots on it. And then I'm gonna put a DE sheet right here so you can see what that looks like. So when you fence the pool, you have to fully complete this sheet over here. So you're gonna see a lot of Bs and a lot of numbers that are four or less probably on the sheet. And then you're gonna see over here, let's say a table of 16, we'll go for a smaller table. Table of 16, it just keeps on collapsing in half until it gets down to one. Now that we got that out of the way, you have all the important information. There is one final thing you may want to review before you go to the event. It's important to bring some good snacks with you. Now everybody's different. I'm not gonna go over the what you should bring exactly. Everybody is different in what they like. Um, me personally, you're gonna wanna bring plenty of water. Um, something with electrolytes is nice. Um, you, I don't personally take in anything with sugar, but there, you might want maybe a, a banana, or you might want some chocolate, maybe some trail mix, things like this. So I would advise you to take snacks for sure. Fancy tournaments can take a long time, even a small one. You could have a local tournament of, you know, just 16, 20 people, and it could still take many, many hours to finish just because Maybe they don't have a lot of refs. Maybe some bouts are really slow. So you may fence your pool, and a pool typically takes an hour at least, and then it may take an hour and a half, two hours, even if there's equipment problems or just really competitive slow bouts. And then you're gonna have a, a, a pause, a break in the middle after the pool's done before DE start, and you're gonna wanna have some snacks then. This is the perfect time to eat a little bit. And then DEs could take a while, especially if you're doing 15 touch bouts. So, I mean, you have to cut down each table in half. Let's say you're in a table of 16. You go 16 to eight, eight to four, to two, and then that's the final bout. So it could take a while, especially if you're doing well and go all the way. So bring enough water, bring enough snacks. And for those who maybe are going to a big tournament, like a national tournament, these are typically at convention centers and they have the most expensive food and snacks ever. So you could buy a bottle of water and it's gonna be like $6 for the bottle of water. You could buy a sandwich and it's gonna cost like 10 bucks and it's like, you know, nothing. And it's cheaply made, but it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. So I highly recommend that you bring your own stuff to these tournaments because you will thank yourself later. It will be cheaper and you'll get better food this way. So bring water, bring snacks, and be prepared for a, perhaps a long day at the venue. All right, that about does it. I hope this video was informative. Um, I know it can be a little nerve wracking. It can be, you feel pretty nervous going to your first tournament, 
but hopefully with this little bit of information, you can go in feeling mentally prepared, so then that way you're not gonna be phased, and you can focus on doing what exactly you're there for, and fence, and have fun. Uh, if you have any questions, maybe you want to understand a certain rules application or some other aspect of the tournament I didn't go over, please comment below and I will quickly respond to any questions or concerns or anything. And please don't forget, like, comment on this video, and subscribe. That would help so much for the channel. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. I will try and film it at the club instead of in a hotel room like this. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you all soon. Have a good one.